Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And welcome to Sacred Heart Church as we celebrate the seventh Sunday of Easter. At this Mass, we pray in a special way for the repose of the soul of Zdenek Karas. Let us begin by praying the Sacred Heart Offering. O oh Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys, and sufferings of this day in union with the holy sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world. I offer them for all the intentions of your Sacred Heart, the salvation of souls, the reparation of sin, the reunion of all Christians. I offer them for peace and justice in the world, the well-being of my loved ones, the intentions of my bishops, and that of our Holy Father, the Pope. Amen. of darkness God has called us, claimed by Christ as God's own people, holy nation, royal priesthood, walking in God's marvelous light. Let us take the words you give, strong and faithful words, to live, words that in our hearts are sown, words that bind us as your own. Out of darkness God has called us, claimed by Christ as God's own people, holy nation, royal priesthood, walking in Light. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And good afternoon to everybody. Good afternoon, We celebrate today the seventh Sunday of Easter and remember at this Mass the repose of the soul of Zedekatus. We prepare ourselves now to celebrate the sacred mysteries of the Eucharist by calling to mind our sins and asking for the Lord's mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the eternal Son of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the King of glory. Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, you bring life to all who call upon you. Lord have mercy. Lord have, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify. Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Receive our 
Graciously hear our supplications, O Lord, so that we who believe that the Savior of the human race is with you in your glory may experience, as he promised, until the end of the world, his abiding presence among us, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus had been taken up to heaven, the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John, and James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. All these devoted themselves with one accord to prayer, together with some women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. may gaze 
on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Of you my heart speaks, you my glance seeks. I be I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, rejoice to the extent that you share in the sufferings of Christ, so that when his glory is revealed, you may also rejoice exultantly. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let no one among you be made to suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as an intriguer. But whoever is made to suffer as a Christian should not be ashamed, but glorify God because of his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that your Son may glorify you, just as you gave him authority over all people, so that your Son may give eternal life to all you gave him. Now, this is eternal life that they should know you, the one true God, and the one you whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I had with you before the world began. I revealed your name to those whom you gave me out of the world. They belong to you, 
and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you gave me is from you, because the word you gave me I have given to them, and they accepted them, and truly understood that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, for the ones you have given me, because they are yours and everything of mine is yours. And everything of yours is mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world, while I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Jesus prays to his heavenly Father as his work in this world concludes. He will then go to offer his life on the cross. He will rise three days later, and he will ascend into heaven. And after that, the Holy Spirit will follow. The Holy Spirit will open the minds of the apostles to a deeper understanding of who Jesus is and what he taught and also what they are to do as they spread his teaching throughout the world. The end of Jesus' earthly ministry is really the marks the beginning of the ministry of the apostles. They will go out and, as he told them later, baptize all nations. And when their individual work is done at the end of their lives, their souls will join Christ in heaven for all eternity, awaiting their own resurrection from the dead as we all do. Jesus' prayer reveals that not only will the souls of the apostles join Jesus in heaven, but our souls as well. He prays, give glory to your son that your son may glorify you just as you have given him authority over all people so that your son may give life to all you gave him. That's you and me. What we do in this world as followers of Christ, both for our benefit and the benefit of those we love, will have an impact not only here, but in eternity as well. It's a far-reaching picture and a far-reaching effect that we have on the lives of those that we indeed touch in life, not only the lives of their earthly existence here, but their eternal lives in heaven. St. Peter in that second reading reminds us that even the suffering we endure in this life will merit us a closer identity with the Christ who suffered for all of us. He specifies, of course, to suffer as a Christian for your faith, for the things you proclaim and do, not to suffer because of something, some evil you have done. You're going to deserve suffering for that because after all, you shouldn't have done it in the first place. And so what price you pay for the evil we do is something that really is our own doing. But he's talking about the suffering we do as Christians. Peter is writing at a time when the break between Christian and Jew was just coming. Uh, they are indeed trying to follow their lives as good Jews, but more and more the realization will come that Christ came to teach something differently. He fulfilled what the Jewish law was proposing, and now they go their own way following what Christ has said because the law of Moses and the prophets has been fulfilled. And they will suffer for that because the Jews will see them as rebels. But nonetheless, he specifies to suffer as a Christian, so that's what he has in mind. Sometimes we do the same thing. We too suffering for, by, for being a Christian when we try to be compassionate, understanding, and kind individuals. It will often bring us misunderstanding. When we try to help others, we're seen as people who are butting into their lives and not minding our own business. When we try to be compassionate, understanding, we're seen as weak and not standing up for what we should stand up for when we are indeed trying to be more forgiving of others. There is a suffering in following Christ and not necessarily a persecution from outsiders, but sometimes from within as well. Sometimes the crises we face in life 
can, can force us to lose sight of the big picture because we think that the immediate crisis is the whole thing. Whatever good we do or evil we endure in this life should be the cause for the increase of grace and the reward of eternal life. That's part of a lengthy prayer that the priests sometimes recite in the sacrament of penance or in the sacrament of reconciliation. May whatever good you do or evil you endure be cause for the increase of grace and the reward of everlasting life. And that's where it all really leads. That's the big picture. Each crisis we go through in life, each difficulty, is one more step closer to our reward in eternity that we will endure now as Christ endured his sufferings to bring us the reward of eternity. We offer our sufferings, as it were, as a prayer to God that he may, he may see it as our accepting his will for us in our life. Now, not that God sends misery in our life, but that misery is part of life in this world. And that sometimes we have to realize that we take whatever it is we suffer here and make of it a prayer and say, all right, Lord, I endure this for the sake of perhaps of my own sins, but also for the sake of your own glory, because I believe that no matter what happens, you will be here to guide me through it. And so this suffering is my prayer. Not that Christ wills that we suffer, but that we indeed realize in our own hearts that the whole story of our life is not here. We acknowledge God as the source of all strength and we endure the trials of this world because he gives us that strength. So here we are in our present situation with this coronavirus and all the rest that it entails. It is but one chapter of what has been the story of our life for all the years we've been in this world. Our story as individuals, our story as a church, our story as a nation, our story as the people of God. It is not the only chapter. It's just one among many of crises that we have endured in our life and will eventually resolve as we resolve the other chapters in our lives. All of our lives contain certain stories of personal trials, personal trials, and then trials as members of the church, trials as members of a nation, trials as members of the human race. We recall pretty soon the people who gave their lives in service to our country in the wars that we fought. Those were crises. The nation at war, not with the disease as it is now, but a nation at war with a foreign enemy. Take your pick, World War I, World War II, Vietnam, Korea, all the rest that we've been through in the Middle East. All of these are things that we as a nation endure, but they weren't the whole chapter. They're different chapters along the way on the road to eternity. Different trials that we suffer as a nation and as a church. War, economic hardships, personal illnesses, both physical and emotional. Each trial, each resolution of that trial, each success marks our journey to eternal life with Christ. Don't lose sight of the fact that it is one chapter among many. We've already lived through many in our past that somehow or other we managed to resolve and overcome. We are now in this present one. We will resolve and overcome this one and probably move on to something else, we hope. It's very important that we never let the crises blind our vision of the goal that which we wish to achieve. And it's stated so beautifully in that responsorial Psalm, Psalm 27. One thing I ask of the Lord, the Psalm says, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. That's the goal to live all our days in the presence of the Lord so that we may contemplate his glory in his temple. This should be our one desire for ourselves and for those that we love, for all the people with whom and for whom we go through the different crises in our life so that we too one day may see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of our life the desire for ourselves, the desire for those he loved. Why? Because it is Christ's desire for all of us. That's why he came. That's why we follow. That's why we imitate. That we might live in the land of the house of the Lord all the days of the li our lives 
and contemplate his temple. That's what he wants for us. He thinks we were worth the effort. Please God, we also realize that following him is worth the effort. And the people that with, whom, with whom we make that journey are also far worth the effort as well. If the Lord thought we were worth it, so too do we. Please God, we never lose sight of that one promise to live in the house of the Lord all the days of our life. God bless you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray now that we might continue Jesus' work and thus give glory to God. For Holy Mother Church, that through her one clear voice, she may continue to nurture the faith in all her children, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Blair, all the priests, deacons, and religious, that they may bring Christ's message to the world through their work and prayer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those who lead our schools, our workplaces, our government agencies, that through the teachings of Christ, they may strive for fairness and harmony, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those struggling with illness or addiction, that they may be strengthened by a supportive and united community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us today, may we be strengthened in our life of prayer and become eager to share the gospel with others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those charged with protecting the health and safety of others, and for those who are tending to the sick and seeking a cure for those who have died, and for those who have died, and those who suffer in any type of pain, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who pray for this weekend, especially the repose of the soul of Zdenek Karas, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For, those, for the intentions written in our book and those in the silence of our hearts. For these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this Memorial Day weekend, since we cannot have a mass for the repose of the souls of those who gave their lives in service to their country, we remember then at this mass as well, those who did give their lives in service to the country and the wars that we fought. For these departed soldiers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, yeah, I pray. God of glory, you raised your son to new life. Hear these our prayers, that one day we might share that same life of glory with you and your Son in the Holy Spirit, 
forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice unto your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and for all of his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly employ you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. <clears throat> and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace.
peace be with you. of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, but you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and Oh, 
Let us pray. Hear us, O God, our Savior, and grant us confidence that through these sacred mysteries there will be accomplished in the body of the whole church what has already come to pass in Christ, her head, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. St. Michael, Michael, the the archangel, archangel, defend defend us in battle. Be our protection protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hey.